Open Friday. The art and cultural site of Southeast Asia. Hi and welcome back to Duran ASEAN. You're with Gauri, and today is Anything Can Happen Friday. And as always, try to bring you the arts and culture side, not only from Malaysia but all over Southeast Asia. And today we will be、uh, reaching into Singapore with a special guest in the studio, and his name is Joel Tan from、uh, the band called Gentle Bones. So we are going to say good morning to him. Hello, Joel. Hi, Gauri. How are you?、Uh, I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Doing good, very good. Thank you very much for coming in. No, thank、uh, you. For Our studio today.、Yeah. So,、uh, tell us, t- tell me a bit about yourself first.、Uh, what do you do in the band? How how did you get started? And what are you doing in Malaysia? Oh yeah, the band is essentially just me. So I'm、mm-hmm. actually just gentle bones. It's just like a moniker for my、okay. for my singer songwriter persona in a way. Yeah. So、uh, does that does that mean something? Um. It, it it it's meant to not mean it's meant to、okay. not mean anything in a way because you know like gentle and bones don't really go very well、mm-hmm. together, yeah. But yeah, essentially it's it's just、uh, something to represent myself when I'm on stage, I guess. Yeah. Right. Okay. And、uh, your trip to Malaysia, this is your first time. Yeah, this is our first、mm-hmm. time performing outside of Singapore. Anyway, yeah. And、uh, how do you find it so far? Oh, I mean, I've been to Malaysia a couple of times, quite a number of times、uh, okay. for holidays. But like this time, it's like purely for work. But the food's great. Like even no matter how tired you are, there's always、mm-hmm. food around. And there's like right. And、uh, tell us a bit about your performance as well. How has the response been from the Malaysian audience? Oh, the Malaysian audience has been crazy. Like a lot of them came down to our show on the B,、mm-hmm. and for laundry as well. And then like everyone came down to just watch the show and 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 came to say hi and wait for waited for our performances. That was that was amazing.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did Did you know that you had a a fan base in Malaysia? I I didn't know because when we were coming down, I really wanted. The show to be as successful as possible, so、mm-hmm. I always I spread the word on social media and all that kind of stuff,、mm-hmm. and ask like the Malaysian fans to, like tag their other friends so that they would、right. come down. Yeah, but I, I mean I guess it, I'm I'm glad it paid off. Okay, and、uh, maybe a bit more about yourself now on how you got started in in music itself. Ah.、Uh, I started when I was 16. Just picked up、okay. the guitar because I felt, and I was in a rock band then, so I I wanted to have my own creative control in、mm-hmm. a way. So I went to my bedroom, started writing songs and putting up online on SoundCloud under the name of Gentle Bones because I needed a name to、okay. upload stuff online. And I guess it kind of stuck throughout the years. And when I hit the age about like, 19, I decided to like record my songs properly and、mm-hmm. uh, on in a professional studio with a、right. professional producer. And it just gave birth to the EP that I put out in August last year. And what was the driving force? Uh, for you to venture into music, instead of taking the conventional path. Right, I guess I've always been a huge fan of music, so、mm-hmm. I've always looked up and I sort of idolized a lot of artists that I I like to listen to.、Mm-hmm. And it's always been a dream of mine to be something like like them. Yeah, but I guess like along、mm-hmm. the way also I discovered like the joy of like creating songs and on its own、mm-hmm. and and being like musically. Inclined in a way, so I、okay. I try to work on my art and and I decided to to just give this a go. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, what about in terms of support from your friends, from from your family? Were they、uh, mm-hmm. okay with your decision, or did they try to talk you、oh, out my, of it? Yeah, my family wasn't that cool with it at, at first, but I mean, after a while, they they I just kept working at it, and、mm-hmm. and they started supporting me. My friends has always have always been there. Yeah,、mm-hmm. but I. And everyone has different musical tastes, so like you can't expect like like kind of mu-、mm-hmm. like your friends like your music, but I guess like they've always been supporting me, which is which is all I I could ask for, I guess. Yeah. And、uh, in terms of、uh, maybe challenges that you faced, uh, because uh, of course going down the music path is not easy, as opposed to just going for a job interview and getting a job. So what was probably the hardest thing about wanting to do wanting to pursue music? I guess it's just to juggle, like as as because I'm only 21, so I I、mm-hmm. I, I, I was very young. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, all, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, but I guess like it's just about juggling like、mm-hmm. school and 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 I I served army for two years before、okay. this, so I guess about juggling the music and 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 your your life commitments, I guess, and that whole kind of juggle and the struggle with keeping up with your finances、mm-hmm. and having enough budget to record an album per se. That I mean, that's the most difficult part. So you are still a student. Uh, I I just finished army, but I'm going to university next year. Yeah. So you will be doing both as well. Yeah, I'll just I'll be doing both my whole life, I think. Ah,、uh, okay. <laughs> And、uh, talking about、uh, studying、uh, in Singapore, well,、uh, how how do you think that you will be able to find that balance? Because、uh, if if you are doing music instead of 
pursuing it uh, full time. Do you think you'll be will be able to juggle, or will that affect your? Uh, yeah, I guess it would affect. But I've always been quite happy with just passing by and just like mm-hmm. scraping through <laughs> the education okay. system. Yeah, and I seem to do it. I think mm-hmm. I seem to do it quite well. We're just like. And what will you be majoring in? I'll be doing business in okay. university. Yeah. So that will also help your. Uh, yeah, it career. would. It would. Yeah. So I. I mean, it's, it's, it just goes. So I'm just gonna like. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the main focus will still always be music, but I'll just see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, and I want to talk about the music scene in uh, Singapore uh, at the moment. If you can give us uh, an overview of uh, what's going on over there. Oh, yeah, the music scene is is very much healthy. Like like in, like even like the KL music scene and everything mm-hmm. else. Like um, there's there's underground music. There's all your post rock stuff. There's there's hardcore metal mm-hmm. music. There's there's pop. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's almost a whole much, range yeah. of everything, and like the good thing about it is that I feel like l- every there's 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 a good act for every single genre mm-hmm. that you can find. Yeah. So. It's and where d- where do you fall under? I've, oh, <laughs> I would say I fall under like the pop, more like the okay. pop category. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and the music scene itself. Do you think that the Singaporean audience are generally very supportive of local music or are they more inclined to listen to international stuff? I guess like over the years, they, they, they started to be more mm. receptive. But I guess like for me, I've always been a fan of local music since I was okay. a kid. So like just following and seeing how, how more people are starting to, to, to care about what local bands are doing, it's, it's quite incredible. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? How... I mean, it's not normal for people to usually be inclined towards local music. Was there a reason why why I it happened with you? Yeah, I guess it's just like um, bands in general mm-hmm. are just improving on their art, mm-hmm. and everyone is tr- um, keeping up with the times, I guess, and 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 slowly because of the ability to work with to to work out a perf- mm-hmm. like a professional sounding track on just on your laptop alone with a simple like program is, is is quite doable nowadays and everybody's and there's, there's more of a le- level playing field mm-hmm. now and so and, and especially like people are being more in touch with like social media and everything mm-hmm. just helps just helps everything yeah what about in terms of exposure for for the local talent local bands in singapore exposure i i think it's pretty good like there are plenty of venues and uh, there's, a, there's this place called the esplanade in singapore mm-hmm. Where where they con- it's a very nice venue, perfect sound and everything, and they constantly take in new artists to to, to play on those stages every mm-hmm. night, and they even pay the artists, which is pretty which is pretty okay. cool. Yeah. Uh, what about like the mainstream TV, mainstream radio? Do they? Uh, mainstream radio plays quite a bit of local music. They 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 do they do support local music a lot. Um, TV not so much because okay. it's it's more of a Chinese audience, so people watch okay. like more dramas <laughs> than. And then listen to music, but yeah, it's it's quite it's quite healthy, I think. So it's uh kind of like the the culture as well. Singaporeans are actually becoming more and more supportive. Yeah, definitely. But like you mentioned, also because the bands are working really hard at improving improving the sound, yeah. the the quality of their albums. Yeah, yeah. And okay, I wanna talk. Uh, maybe we'll take a short break now. Okay. And when we come back, we'll talk more about your single, uh, Save Me. Yeah. Anything can happen on Friday. The art and cultural site of Southeast Asia. Hi, welcome back to Duran ASEAN. You're with Gauri and uh, you're listening to Anything Can Happen Friday. And of course, I have Joel Tan from um, Gentle Bones in the house tonight, uh, all the way from Singapore. And earlier we were discussing more about yourself and the music scene in Singapore in general. But let's talk more about your album and also your single, which is called uh, Save Me. And apparently you outdid the script Sam Smith at Sharon and Maroon 5 in the charts is that right? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah but this is only in the Singaporean chart so it's oh, not, okay. not really fair but yeah I mean I put out the EP when in August and uh-huh. just like we put it out for pre-orders and on pre-orders alone like a lot of people ordered the album and they got the <laughs> number one which is crazy yeah. and uh, why do you think the song did so well? I guess it's just uh, like because I put out a couple of singles before that, okay. so there were th- the first single was Until We Die, second one was Elusive, mm-hmm. the third one was Save Me. So I guess the build up to the EP was pretty, was pretty intense, and I guess like I'm glad like people like the songs enough mm-hmm. to keep up with the intensity of the okay. release because it was all jam packed within like six months, where I had to get like three music videos out and three singles. Yeah, so. And uh, is there uh, a particular sound that that uh, you try to? 
uh, keep it consistent every time? Yeah, I, like I, the I guess it's not. I wouldn't say it's a really consistent sound, but I guess I like to keep the whole, especially for this EP, the whole mm-hmm. theme of 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 grandeur and like like majesty is like kind of there mm-hmm. where, where where we would squeeze like ten people in a room and sing okay. and sing like uh, the same line over and over again mm-hmm. and have like like maybe my violinist Josh like play strings like like over a hundred times just to make that just to give it an like orchestral sound mm-hmm. so that that was quite intense. Yeah, but that's, I guess like these kind of themes are like mm-hmm. really consistent throughout the EP. So uh, you were saying earlier that, that you released a few singles before uh, Save Me as well, and that yeah. build up uh, kind of helped. So what about the, uh, the the songs before that? How was the the response to that to those songs? Yeah, the funny thing is like the first song that I put out was actually just like a kind of like B O N O kind of thing mm-hmm. for me, where I would just like spend quite a bit of money on recording mm-hmm. the song and mm-hmm. a bit more money on the video, and I would just put it out. And if it doesn't work out, then I would just go be- go to oh. serve my national okay. service okay. and just uh, chill out and live the rest of my life as a normal person. But like, I guess like. Um, it, it, when I put that thing out it kind of like gained quite a bit of traction the song Until mm-hmm. We Die started like, being played on radio all the radio stations uh-huh. and all the kind of like local celebrities started spreading the word and people just by the word of mouth just got to quite mm-hmm. a bit uh, quite a number of people in Singapore and that, that kind of like spurred me on to know that I couldn't just stop there I guess right, and right. I just recorded the next single after next and then the whole EP came out and people are waiting to hear more from, from you I hope so, I hope so yeah. <laughs> right and uh, talking about your album uh, itself is there uh, how how's the whole process how long did it take you to to come up with the EP um, I guess it took about it's about six months mm-hmm. so it's just a lot of right, um, a lot of recording a lot of uh, fi- knowing what I would want in a certain part trying to find the sound because as uh, the first EP is quite definitive to an artist in a way where mm-hmm. you would actually because it's the first time especially for me as a singer songwriter I don't have a I don't, I don't write with a band so to be able to go to okay. the studio and just figure out what the, the what, what I would want the EP to sound like was quite a laborious process but I guess we did it in the end and uh, what were the challenges that you faced along the way um it's it's hard to say that there are mm-hmm. any challenges because I really enjoy doing what I do. So mm-hmm. every I guess like the challenges are, are what is is what like makes it fun. I guess yeah. Okay, and uh, in terms of uh, marketing your album as well, when you when you started out, uh, of course focusing in Singapore, but uh, you had plans to reach out to other parts of Southeast Asia. Yeah, we definitely do. Like to this KL will be our mm-hmm. first stop. We're planning trips for. Manila, planning trips to Jak- uh, Jakarta, JB. <laughs> JB, of course. Yeah. That's very close. Yeah, so there, there are a couple of other mm. trips like planned out, and we just hope to play to as many people as possible mm-hmm. and just spread the word of the music further, yeah. And um, w- uh, did you ever get any setbacks, like people telling you, like, oh, maybe you're too young for this um. or... Or only a certain kind of. Audience. I guess most most people just say like you're not yeah you're pretty ugly and like <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm cool with that man like it's all it's all cool so I just put okay. on my music and people like to listen to it and just, right yeah. and uh, when it comes to marketing your your album as well uh, image is something that is very important so what is the kind of the image that you try to uh, set for yourself. Or how you want people to know you as as gentle bones or as as Joel I guess Khan. the image is just about not putting on a false pretense. I mm-hmm. guess like the the way I would want my want people to know me is 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 to know me as Joel, not and not gentle bones as much as they like the music of gentle bones. Okay. And I guess like I tried to like put myself off that way so mm-hmm. that they would they would just see me as a normal person that just sings this song. And if mm-hmm. you like my song, just come down and be friends and. And watch the show, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's no barrier. No, no, I I, I I don't really like that kind of thing. Yeah. So wh- wh- why do you prefer people knowing you as as Joel Tan as, as opposed to? That's the thing. The tricky thing is that because like Joel Tan, like that name is, like if you go to Singapore, you can find at least like ten thousand uh. other Joel Tans in Singapore. So so I mean I just need a name that that would be easy to find on YouTube and on Google and all that kind of stuff. So get I guess a moniker was pretty necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And going back to your EP, uh, V, you want to tell us uh, what was the the story behind it? Is there a particular message that you were trying to get across with, w- the, with, what, with the, your EP? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. The EP was was a very step by step process, so uh-huh. I really didn't have a, gla- a grand plan for it. As okay. you know, like when I put out the first single, I, did, I was mm. it was it was supposed to be the end of it, but I guess like. 
I just wanted people to be able to feel for my songs and I guess like the story that you tell mm. shouldn't be too self obsessive because if you write a song that is yeah. yeah if you write a song that, that is too that is too personal I guess people don't relate to it but yet like if you keep the pers- the personal things to, to a pretty like vague level I guess most people would latch on to it and I guess that's the reason why I write music I guess is to affect people rather than mm. to tell my story in a way yeah so it's not uh, really about your story. I guess it? it is about me, but I can't. Mm. I I don't go into too much detail because okay. in the end, I would want people to mm. relate. Uh, yeah. And uh, the the album itself, uh, it seems that. Uh, what about in terms of funding? Oh, uh, funding was funded mostly by myself, mm-hmm. but we got uh, quite a bit of money from from the government. Because okay. um, the good thing about Singapore government, as much as people as much people um, complain about it is yeah. that they, they, they fund quite a bit of people in the arts so when you you just sign up fill up an application form you, mm-hmm. and then you get like a couple of thousand dollars to, to help with your first project in a way so that got me started on this EP if, without them and without like the first single that they did well I guess it wouldn't uh, have that was from the National Arts Council National Arts right? Council yeah so uh, af- apart from giving uh, grants to uh, bands that uh coming up with, with the, you said first project right yeah Which first project they usually only help with the first yeah they I mean they help subsequent mm. projects but the okay, first one okay. is their main priority yeah, for most bands and they help everything else from like publications to, okay. to, to people who want to start their websites people who want to don't know just promote mm. their whatever that, the business that they're doing as long as it's like local they would help yeah so uh, the requirement is just that you have to be local or do they have yeah uh, you have to local and you have to have a convincing 10 uh, page application form mm-hmm. okay yeah. so uh, talking about uh, going back to music uh, it says uh, I did some reading on your music and they call it the Singapore alternative music which is that? Your, your music oh. they termed it as the alternative music in Singapore yeah I, I guess so like, I I I don't really like to label music, okay. so like I just write music that I like. To, I would like to listen to, and I would like people to listen to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, what about uh, your future plans for an album? Because right now you're still marketing your. your yeah, we're still EP. promoting this album, but I guess like the next one's already in the works. So I've been writing songs ever since I put this, ever since I finished this EP. So mm-hmm. we're just trying to like explore sounds and take just take my time with the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I want to ask you a little bit also about your efforts in promoting the album uh, itself was it uh, difficult to to reach out uh, to people what were the challenges you faced in in that aspect I guess I'm lucky because I was born in that g- the generation where people don't have to go out to watch you mm. in order to find out about mm. you because the social media b- game is like kind of so strong now and one simple YouTube video can be shared across all, all platforms from Facebook to Instagram or to mm-hmm. Twitter so I guess I was lucky enough to have people who bothered about the music enough to spread the word to their friends and like, that sort of like sparked the chain reaction which helped me which saved me a lot of marketing money okay yeah. uh, so you that would mean that it's a lot easier for musicians these days as well uh whether you're a local band, independent band, uh, it's, it's a lot easier these days to reach out to the audience yeah, as definitely. opposed to... Yeah, definitely. Because uh, like, when, when I was a fan of local music then, it wasn't strong. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that strong and people have to constantly mm-hmm. go down and it's hard for local bands to just reach out to as many people as possible because the scene is just so small. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to take another short break and when we come back, we'll talk more about A Gentle Bones. Anything can happen Friday. The art and cultural side Hello and welcome back to Duran ASEAN. You're with Gauri on Anything Can Happen Friday. And I still have Joel uh, with me here in the studio. Hi, Gauri. Hi. And you're okay? Yeah, we're doing good. <laughs> so uh, we'll continue talking about uh, Malaysia for a bit. Uh, you, uh, earlier I was asking you if you have any specific uh, favorite acts in Malaysia. Oh, yeah. we uh, I, we have I listen to a lot of Yuna, mm-hmm. Zia V as well. And like um, an honest mistake in this punk band. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, uh, okay. do, uh, what do you think is the major difference between the local bands in Malaysia compared to Singapore, or just the music scene in in general? I guess it's somewhat the same, but um, because of the Malaysian market, it's so much bigger, and there's 
a lot more opportunities. I guess mm-hmm. like it's 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 a, it's a lot healthier in Malaysia, and you look see I X like Yuna and ZRV do so mm-hmm. well internationally. Mm-hmm. It's just very inspiring for us Singaporeans. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, generally Malaysians would think that our scene here is pretty small compared oh, to they? Singapore. Right. <laughs> no, that that's not the perception. No, there. actually. No, we I Singapore always thinks that the mu- okay. music scene is the smallest. Maybe <laughs> because um. just because we're bigger. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, relatively, we do have a lot of uh, problems right. uh, in terms of even audience response uh, when it comes to uh, local gigs, performances. Uh, it seems that they are still uh, more inclined towards uh, Western popular music. Yeah, but that's the problem in Singapore as well. Mm-hmm. Like. Um, if anything, like if we if a, a few bands in Singapore didn't take the step out to try to reach out to social media and like maybe like beef up their marketing, uh, and mm-hmm. me, it probably wouldn't have happened. But I mean, we're slowly okay. trying to convince the crowd, and hopefully by convincing the Singapore Singaporean audience, which we 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 would think is the toughest audience to right. to please, especially if you're local. I guess mm-hmm. we might stand a good chance outside as well. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, the part about convincing the audience because, of course, at the end of the day, the audience actually play a very important role in how the the music scene, probably even shaping the entire music yeah. scene in the country. And what do you think are probably some of the ways that you can convince the local audience to support local music and not... I mean, of course, they can still listen to international music, but for them to realize that local music just has as much substance. Yeah, I, I guess it's just it's a very conversational thing. Where mm-hmm. I mean, you can't expect change to just happen immediately. So it's all about like bands constantly setting the tone, mm-hmm. and maybe like in the future, like if I if I would just pay it forward and just have another act just do have have a, have a knowledge of of his music and 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 yet have a team behind him that's so strong that would like just push him mm-hmm. further overseas. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. I guess, but like a lot, of, a lot of people tend to only recognize their mm-hmm. local talents after they get famous overseas, right. which is kind of a ba- bad thing. But I guess like slowly changing, I would say. But yeah. even uh, those who make it uh, well internationally, when they come back, they don't really get uh, the same response as as they do. Oh, really? Overseas. I, I guess mean, like in Singapore, because Singapore mm-hmm. is a lot. Um, the the Mandarin pop scene is very strong so mm-hmm. when people go overseas to perform and then they get famous over overseas in Taiwan and China they come back to Singapore right. they, pre- they do pretty well okay yeah maybe that's just the case in Malaysia then <laughs> wait oh, where that happens oh, I, I really don't okay I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I want to talk about the Bay Beats Festival in Singapore maybe you can uh, tell us a bit about what the festival is all about and oh, the festival is a very alternative festival mm-hmm. in Singapore where they would invite um, a lot of alternative acts from from metal, from hardcore to to like indie rock bands to just come down and play a couple of sets from Singapore and from like overseas as well. Mm-hmm. And I guess like just it's just one of the one of the most like hyped up festival in Singapore. I, I okay. would say yeah, especially for a local um, a local festival which which don't really invite. Like very well known bands, mm-hmm. like e- even though like the bands aren't, aren't very well known, as well, like a lot of people still come down, which is which is, I guess it's just it's just a very healthy kind of thing that mm-hmm. keeps going every year. And you mentioned that you wanted to perform there. Oh as yeah, well. I would love to play it, but I guess like uh-huh. because of the whole underground thing, like th- my sound doesn't really suit the the festival. But okay. I mean that would be the dream. Uh, yeah. And uh, speaking of. Uh, regional uh, level as well apart from Singapore and Malaysia is there any other countries that you you plan to uh, have a tour you mentioned Jakarta as well yeah uh, just Which is, um, there are a lot of places where we would like love to go on tour but mm-hmm. I mean in the end of the day is to to be able to have um, enough budget to send the band mm-hmm. across the border I guess yeah so um, Jack, we have we have plans on Jakarta Manila other parts of Malaysia like Penang mm-hmm. Johor Bahru all these kind of stuff so we just hope we, I mean we Australia as well so we're just okay. hoping that it comes through yeah so uh, usually when someone is making popular music it's uh, a lot easier for them to reach out to a wider uh, range of audience but uh, doing uh, alternative music uh, which is what you're yeah. doing yeah so do you think that makes it a bit difficult for you to reach out to the audience the funny thing is that I think like most audiences especially in uh, in Singapore they, they, mm-hmm. they're quite knowledgeable so like okay. there's a huge span of audiences that listen to mm-hmm. a whole lot of different kind of music right. and like I guess like people understand what 
and people have like their own taste and their own preferences on music and, mm-hmm. and they, they do actually go quite deep into listening to music and uh, le- you can see like One Direction maybe coming to Singapore and selling out a stadium and you mm-hmm. can see like mm-hmm. Indie X coming over and playing at a small venue but also selling right, out right. so there isn't I, I guess like the audience is super cre- pretty receptive to everything okay yeah, so I wouldn't say like just because you play alternative music you wouldn't mm-hmm. stand a chance in the market obviously like you can't play right. too, too alternative you can't be too underground because then that even though you, you make it in the world you probably won't mm. get much of an audience but I mean that's just the reality of, of how people listen to music there's always we, it always comes in numbers and percentages and yeah okay but when it comes you were saying as long as they're not too alternative or too underground but how do you draw draw the line there I guess it's, I, I wouldn't claim to be able to draw a line myself, mm-hmm. but like I guess there's just this understanding of what is contemporary and what sticks to people that I guess mm-hmm. like some musicians who, who want to make it a career, I guess, like who want to make a living out of it have to consider. Yeah. So do you think it's possible uh, for you to be a full-time musician uh, in, in Singapore? If you actually wanted to pursue music, yeah, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but you mm-hmm. can't just do mu- you can't be a performer alone. I guess okay. you have to do everything else from like recording, producing people, or maybe like writing right. songs for people or teaching music. But I mean, it's it's not that bad. Like you still can pretty much do quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, is that because of the maybe there's no proper uh, payment system? No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, j- that's just the reality yeah. in everywhere in the world. Like okay. even for Europe, even though right. you see all the big stars come in over right. to Singapore, but there's a whole hundreds and thousands of mm-hmm. other bands stuck there mm-hmm. trying to make a living and struggling, right. working at fast food restaurants just to pass the day. So I mean, it's just the way it works. Uh, you can't really ask. You cannot, right. I wouldn't say that you uh, people in Singapore really have the right to complain because it's, I mean, if anything, like people in Singapore are qu- pretty comfortable already. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I want to ask you also about your plans uh, to expand. Uh, earlier, I asked you about uh, this region, Southeast Asia. So, do you plan to reach out of it, maybe in in a couple of years or so? Yeah, we hope. We definitely hope so. Like the faster, the better. But I guess mm-hmm. like the music's the most important at the moment. Just okay. trying to write more stuff and um, just get to a level which I feel would would stand a chance in the international market. Yeah. Okay, but. Uh, I mean, you are pretty uh, young yourself, and it's amazing that you've already have your own EP and you've created a name for yourself. Mm. Um, b- uh, do, how do you think that this uh, can help you to uh, move your career uh, further? Because a lot of people usually have this perception that, oh, okay, you have to have like a certain number of years of experience first before you can actually um, delve deep into it and, and make something out of it. Yeah, I, I I don't deny that you have to put in a lot mm-hmm. of years, and I mm-hmm. guess like it's it's scary to think that I've been doing f- it for three years, but other other bands that they take like ten, fifteen years to just make it big and make their mark on the world. So I guess mm-hmm. like it's all about patience, I guess. But I mean, it's just doing my best to speed up that process and see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, and uh, comparing to Malaysia, because. Uh, over here, even when we talk to local musicians, they usually say that it's generally close to impossible to just uh, have a career out of music. You need to have a daytime job. You need to be working in, you know, in some have some corporate job yeah. on the side and whatnot. And in order to change that, what do you think needs to change first if we were to uh, turn that whole thing around? I wouldn't say there's m- much that we can change because mm-hmm. the, the reality of the whole thing is that like CDs don't sell anymore. Mm-hmm. Record labels are, uh, are struggling to keep up with their finances. Um, People like only the only money you get is maybe like a couple of cents when people listen to your song on okay. Spotify that kind of stuff it's just the reality of the whole media industry now and I guess it's just about trying to find ways to leverage as much as you can on the audience mm-hmm. and like like let's say like mm. having them come down for your shows, having them buy your merch. It's just about understanding what the audience, what what your audience would want, want I guess, and try to make mm-hmm. money out of that. Out of that. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious to know as well when you have uh, request for for gigs and all, uh, do you try to pick your gigs carefully, or do you think that the bands should be more open to performing pretty much anywhere for for the exposure for people to know you? Right. Um, I guess it's, it really depends. Like, it's not just exposure when you play everywhere. Like, you gain a lot of experience mm-hmm. as well, which you cannot gain anywhere else other than being on stage and seeing the crowd. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I guess like as a, as a new band, it's always it's always healthy to like just push your music out as far as possible. Mm-hmm. Like if I was given any any chance to play anywhere overseas, I would I would play it. There's not a question. Okay, there. and uh, speaking uh, about your music as well, uh, you're saying that you do have plans to actually incorporate uh, more influences uh, to what you're doing at, at the moment. Yeah, because um, this album is really inspired by like folk and a bit of like gospel and a bit of like. Um, Pop music, I guess. Okay. Yeah, but the new direction I was, I would probably be going to this is just like a bit more electronic influence. Just like embrace the kind of like te- technology and everything, and how right. how how music has advanced in terms of produ- production, I guess. Yeah. And uh, your your album right now, you're saying that you, uh, of course, you write your own uh, lyrics for all your songs. And yeah. uh, I write I write the melodies and everything as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, is there a, a specific message that that you have in in each song? There, there isn't like a general message in the sense like everything all the message I'm trying to put across is very much influenced by the the life experiences that I go through so like for for one example like the first song Until We Die it's mm-hmm. very much about experience I had with a group of friends who I grew up with okay. and we just had the, sh- the struggles with like going going through school but yet one thing to spend as much time as we can with each other and just having a having a lot of fun and I guess mm-hmm. it's just a slight bit of rebellion but I guess mm-hmm. I just hope it will inspire people that like just consider what they want from life because everyone just put through the standard process of education but just like to have a think through of like what you would actually want to do I guess. Mm-hmm. and uh, I think that brings us back to uh, maybe if I can touch a little bit on the education system itself in Singapore because uh in Malaysia as well, we always have this uh, perception that, okay, uh, when you go to school, you go to the science stream, you end up becoming a doctor or a lawyer and whatnot. Uh, is there anything different about uh, the system in Singapore that gives you the freedom to uh, choose whatever career you want or, or there's more flexibility? Compared to um, in anywhere else? Yeah, yeah. Or, or even to Malaysia. I, I guess... The, it I wouldn't say there's flexibility in a way because mm-hmm. there's always pressure of you trying to stick to the standard path of going to university yeah. towards end game yeah. university yeah. and a good job. But like Singapore does offer quite a bit of um, different like kind of schools for for people who are interested in music and the arts to go to like NAFA, Nanyang, um, LaSalle, okay. School of the Arts. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of different places you could go to just pursue what you would want to do even for sports as well okay but i mean as much as they give you these kind of options i still feel feel like the main motivations especially for something as delicate as art still would come from yourself right. you can't really be thought thought a lot of things especially the way the way the industry works now it's, it's really not about following a for- formula mm-hmm. anymore yeah it's more about following your heart and yeah, your passion your and just, and just yeah. being inspired by everything and anything yeah uh but uh speaking of that as well uh you were saying that, of course, Singapore has a lot of uh, schools for, for arts, for music, or even uh, for sports. Uh, but having the schools alone, uh, of course, um, that's not enough. Because if parents still keep pushing their kids to be doctors and lawyers, uh, no one will still go to the school. Yeah. So uh, could it also be because uh, Singaporeans in general are also more inclined towards uh, arts, or they are more open to the whole idea of having an arts degree compared to a science Singaporeans more open to more open to having uh, to students having an arts degree as opposed to a science degree. Like, do they uh, look at you differently if you tell them you major in arts as opposed to no, science? No, I, I, I think oh. when when in the early days of like Singapore, yeah, you you do get judged. Like every everybody was going to engineering, nobody was uh-huh. doing anything in the arts. If the arts were, were meant for like leftovers and that kind of thing, but I think now slowly like people are people know that whoever somebody goes to is, is, uh, is most likely a choice even if you, okay. you you might you might you might not do very well and still go to science it's not it's not really okay not really, there's no there's no stigma to it I would say yeah. and what do you think is uh, the way forward for local music in in any country or even in Singapore hopefully the way forward is just to have more people like I wouldn't say I wouldn't I wouldn't ask for support, but rather like if you support, the, if mm-hmm. you like the band, then mm-hmm. have m- more people just understand the, the, the need to kind of like feed the person, I guess, like because that that's their main that's the main job. And if you and if you do consume their their stuff, like I guess just to be able to just do- like download their mm-hmm. songs like properly and not illegally, yeah, that's the most. I think that's the kind of consensus that people have to to, to, to get, I guess. Okay, yeah. uh, and I'll ask you a uh, uh, little. Not not really personal, but uh, 
a bit more on uh, personality wise how would you describe yourself in in three words uh i guess i'm cheerful uh-huh. in a way like uh but yet boring <laughs> a bit boring yeah a bit boring <laughs> and um that's what's the third one uh maybe you're adventurous yeah I, I would say I'm maybe passionate. adventurous I guess like doing music is pretty risky and stuff. okay <laughs> and um, a, another tricky one as well what is the one decision that you think you made in the past that has changed your life or got you where you are right now one uh I guess it's just being with the friends mm-hmm. that I've been with for quite a while because they might not be the best friends to be with, especially if you want to do well in your studies. But, I mean, <laughs> okay. they've influenced me a lot as a person and, like, they sort of shaped my, my, my perception of life, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we're almost at the end of our session. So, before I wrap things up, I want to ask you, uh, what are your hopes for the future of the music industry in Singapore or also... Uh, for the local bands all over the world? Yeah, I guess, like, e- anywhere, you know, it applies to anybody else, but, mm-hmm. like, I especially for Singapore, I guess, with something so delicate as English music, mm-hmm. as, a chi- as a Chinese or as a Malay person or as anybody else, like, just seeing English music is always a stigma, but I guess, like, to my main dream would just be to have one band, like, do, from Singapore or from I mean, Malaysia, just do mm-hmm. well overseas. I mean, Malaysia is, like, has a number, but Singapore, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I feel, it still doesn't have any. Okay. So, if Singapore would ever have one, that, w- that would be crazy. It's like, yeah. And uh, if people want to uh, get in touch with you or learn more about your music, uh, is there a website that they can go to? Oh, yeah. There's, uh, there's, I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. You can just go to facebook.com slash gentlebonesmusic, youtube.com slash gentlebones. So just Google up gentlebones. You should be able to find most of the stuff. Yeah. Okay. And final question, uh, who are your biggest influences when it comes to music? Um, like Several other, like I grew up listening to a lot of Michael Jackson, a lot uh-huh. of Best Life, a lot of Backstreet Boys. Yeah, so th- like I've always have pretty like my foot pretty like deep in in, in the mud of a uh, pop music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I guess like main Ed Sheeran, Ben Howard, Lucy Rose, all these uh, folk acts I've been really into. Yeah. And is there anyone that you would like to? collaborate with in the future yeah def- I would like to collaborate with a lot of artists but I mean then um, maybe Kanye West for one okay yeah he's pretty cool why, why Kanye West I just feel like he's a genius and he's, okay. like, and he's just constantly breaking boundaries which is quite necessary like right. as much as he th- people might not like his work but it leaves people thinking to what to what you can actually do and just not to stick within like the linear ladder of how p- most people operate yeah okay so uh, thank you so much Joel for coming into our studio today and sharing your insights uh, about the local music scene local bands and also for sh- uh, sharing about your album with yeah, us yeah thanks for having me Gary. so uh, all the best for your uh, future plans 